Hey, thanks for dropping by and checking out this message. These lessons come from our Sunday gatherings at Victory Christian Church in Franklin, Indiana. Our 5th through 8th graders meet at 9 or 10.30 a.m. and our high schoolers meet from 6 to 8 p.m. If you find that this content brings value to your life, then please consider subscribing and hitting that bell so that you can be notified when we upload our next message. Our hope is that this video brings more clarity into your life as to who God is and what He wants for you in light of who Jesus is and what He's done for you. Enjoy and have a great day. How are we doing? I know, I know you guys just came off a fall break and you're kind of like, mm, but let's try that one more time. How are we doing today? Good. Good. Awesome. That's what I like to hear. So today we're starting, uh, we're actually continuing a year-long series we've kind of been in. And uh, for those of you who haven't been here, we've been kind of going through uh, periodically different things that are trending or things that are talked about a lot, things that are happening, things that people know about and people struggle with. And how do we handle these topics in a God-honoring way? And how do, how do we know what God is wanting for our lives in the midst of these difficult conversations or topics? And, and so this week is no different. We're going to continue this series uh, on what is trending. Now, when, when I talk about what's trending, what I mean is something that either everybody knows about or everybody's talking about or everybody's doing and it's really popular right now. So last semester, it was a lot of flossing, right? That's the one dance move I can do. You're welcome. And today, it's, it's probably not flossing. Everybody kind of can floss, but people are kind of over that if we're, if we're being real. And now we're onto something new. It's catching the woe, right? That was my dance, new, dance move number two right there. So you should be happy that I can do that for you. So, um, so somebody toss it to me. Oh, yeah, yeah. A little bit of sass coming off that. Now, now I'm going to throw it to you guys. Everybody stand up. Okay, ready? We're going to do this in like five seconds. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up right now. One, two, three. Okay, I'm going to try that one more time. And let me dig out a bigger one over here. Okay, ready? Here we go. Okay, that was, that was a little bit better. You guys can have a seat. All right, I'm just messing with you guys. But, but for real though, there's, there's different things that like everybody does. For example, you guys wanna know what, like, what kind of things people did when I was your age? It, it, was like, it was like, you know, jinx, when you jinx somebody, you say the same thing. It wasn't like, jinx, you owe me coke. It was like, jinx, and you punch them. And, and so whoever said jinx first got to like punch the other person. Or, or we had like, you know, if you saw a slug bug, at the car, you get to slug the person next to you. Slug bug, first, first person to call it gets to do it. Cruiser bruiser, see a PT cruiser. You know, uh, or, or this has kind of come back around, but if you look through the hole under the waist, you get somebody to look, you get to punch them, right? And, and pretty much anything that gave us the right to punch somebody else, that's what we did when I was your age. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to see that mostly we've moved on from that Except for that last one there. Uh, so punching people and then shell necklaces. Those were the two big things when I was your guys' age, and it was awesome. And so uh, I'm kind of actually glad that some of those have moved on. But, but when we talk about what's trending, you all know what it is. You know what it is. It, it's, it's something that's popular. It's something you've heard of. It's something that's gone viral and you've watched. And it's something that like everybody either does or talks about. So, so that's, that's happened. Water bottle flipping. So glad that's done, right? Because then it was... People, like, I couldn't even talk to somebody without them, like, trying to flip their water bottle while talking to me, and it was super frustrating, right? But it was also addicting and fun, and I did it too. So, like, things, things come, things change, but today, something that we're going to talk about is something that actually has been trending for uh, a long time, since the beginning of humanity, okay? And it is anxiety. How many of you, you have heard uh, somebody say, well, you've heard somebody say, like, I have anxiety. Or, or I am anxious, or, or like you either you've heard somebody who, who has that, or you know someone, or you yourself have felt this way. And it's such a huge deal, and a huge topic, and I wanna tackle it today. But what I wanna start out by saying before we, before we even go any further into this topic is that you're not gonna find your one size fits all answer for how to deal with this today. Okay, we're gonna talk about some really cool things, some tools that we can use when it comes to dealing with things like anxiety, but I don't want you to walk out of here thinking like, okay, 
If I just do this one thing, I'll never feel anxiety ever again. Or I can go tell my friend this and they'll be cured of their anxiety because it just doesn't work quite like that. I think most of you know that. But this is something that I want us to, to tackle today and, and to come into it thinking, what, what, what does God have to teach us from this? What, what, is, what does God want to show me that, that can actually help my life when it comes to the topic of anxiety? Because as, as middle schoolers, I know you guys are under a lot of pressure. You have lots of things that you have to keep up with. You've got to keep up with your homework, which is tremendous, I know. You've got to keep up with all your extracurriculars. You've got, you got a lot of pressure and stress on you to make the right decision, make the good grades, choose the right classes, to have the right career path later, and all this kind of stuff. And, and I, I get it. I get it. And so it's, it's, it's common. This is a big deal. And, and what I want to do first is differentiate between a couple terms because – a lot of times we use the terms stress and anxiety interchangeably, but I want to define these and help us kind of come to a better understanding of what we're talking about when we're talking about anxiety. So stress, let's talk about stress first, all right? Stress is our body and mind's response to certain situations in life. It's, it's, it's our body and our mind's response to certain situations in life. Uh, and this can be a good or a bad thing. It's positive or negative. It's, it's something that actually God designed us with. And it, it's a good thing because when you have a test coming up or auditions or a game, and, then, and you kind of feel a little stressed about it and make, making sure you get everything done, making sure you're prepared, that's good because that stress helps you stay alert and kick it into gear and be able to have a focus that you need to get something accomplished. Right? It, 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 it lets you know. It's, it's your mind letting your body know that this, this is important. I better pay attention. I better do this well. And I better put all my effort into it. Stress can be good that way. Uh, what, what's not good is when we let the stress control us. And we start treating people bad because we're feeling stressed out. Right? You, you guys have known someone like, he's like, don't talk to me right now. I'm stressed. Right? Like, I'm about to go into this test. I need to, to, to focus on what I studied five seconds ago at lunch so that I can remember it for the test in five minutes, right? And, and I know how that is. And, and so sometimes it can be positive, but sometimes it can be negative. And, and also, stress uh, is usually short-term, and it's a reaction to something specific in our lives. So that means once the stressful situation has ended, the stress usually ends with that as well. Uh, for instance, you know when you come to the end of the school year and you finish your last final and you can breathe deep and you can walk outside and smell the fresh air and summer's here and you don't have to worry about another test for two more months, right? That's, you, you guys know that feeling and that's, that's, the stress is lifted and you don't have that stress anymore, right? It's situational, short term. It ends whenever the situation that is causing the stress is over. Okay, so those are, those are the things that I want you to remember when we're talking about stress. But when we talk about anxiety, anxiety is a little bit different. First off, anxiety is an overwhelming feeling of worry, unease, or fear that tends to hang around. So when, when you hear the word anxiety, I want you to automatically associate that word with the word fear. Because that's the number one emotion that we feel when we feel anxiety. Deep-rooted, it's fear. And we're afraid that we're going to miss something, afraid that we're not prepared, afraid that something is going to go wrong. That's, that's fear talking. And it's a, an overwhelming sense of it. And, and, and here's the thing. I know that sometimes, like, stress was situational. Like, we could say, oh, the, the, the test was giving me stress. But anxiety is not always that way. Sometimes it's so overwhelming and we can't figure out where it's coming from. If you talk to anybody who's, who's experienced anxiety for a long period of time, then usually you, know, you can talk to them and say, like, well, why do you feel anxious? And they, can, they just, I don't know, right? I don't know. I can't point my finger to a specific reason why I feel anxious. I just feel anxious. And it's this overwhelming feeling. And that's, that's what anxiety is. Anxiety generally affects us only negatively and it continues after the stressful situation is no longer present. So when a person has anxiety, it's, it's something that is less controllable. It's not like you can just associate that with, oh, oh I have the auditions coming up and so I'm, I'm anxious about that. That's, that's a little bit different. It, it's when you can't understand why you feel so anxious 
And it's when the situation's over, but you still have feelings of anxiety, of worry, of fear, of being overwhelmed. And, and, and that's, that's what it means to have anxiety. And so remember, I want you to associate that word with fear. And, and you can also uh, associate it with worry. It's something that is, is to the extent that it interferes with your daily life. That's anxiety. And, and so what do we do with that? When we feel anxious, when we don't know where it comes from, when we don't know what we're supposed to do with it, what do we do? It's a little bit harder to handle than stress. And while stress can sometimes be good, anxiety is never good. What do we do with those feelings of anxiety? How, how do we get over that hump of feeling like, I, I don't want to be bogged down by my fear, by my anxiousness, but I don't know what to do. Luckily, we're going to talk through a story that, that does have a lot to do with this. Like I said, this, this issue predates us. It's been turning for thousands of years. It, it's, it's been something that humans have, have tried to deal with forever. And, and, um, in fact, back, back when David was king, remember King David? He, he conquered Goliath. He, he, he was known as the man after God's own heart. He was, he was the one that always had it together. He was the best king of Israel. But even he felt anxious at times. In fact, there's one time he had been captured by his enemies. And in that moment, he, 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 you know, he was captured. There's, there's nothing else for him to do. No one else to turn to but to God. And here's what I'm about to read to you. It, it, what I want you to understand is that it can sound like a cop-out. Okay? And it sounds really simple and easy. And when I read it to you, you're going to go, oh, well, of course he would say that. But I want you to recognize that this is the first of many steps when it comes to this topic. And you have to do this one first. And you have to keep coming back to it. Because if you don't do this, then all the other things that we try to do, if we go to Google and figure out how to deal with anxiety, if we watch our favorite YouTube channels and try to figure out how other people deal with feelings of anxiety, then that's all great. But if we don't do this first one, if we don't keep coming back to this, then the other stuff will only be dealing with the symptoms of anxiety and not the root issue. Okay? So this is, this is what David wrote in the book of Psalm in chapter 56 when he was dealing with anxiety. He said, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. And he's talking to God. Remember, I wanted you to associate anxiety with fear. He, he took his anxiety, he took his fears, he took his worry about the situation, be captured by his enemies, and he said, When I am afraid, God, I put my trust in you. Now, I want you to recognize that David, in that moment of danger, made a choice, an active choice to put his trust into God. See, that's something that, that sometimes we forget to do. We... we have anxiety or we have whatever deal, issue we're dealing with and we try to look for solutions. We go, go to answers and we try to figure it out ourselves and we try to solve it. When sometimes we first just need to lay it at God's feet. That's why God says to cast your cares upon him. And that's why in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus is talking to his people and he says, Hey, you remember how God takes care of the birds? The birds are so insignificant compared to us, but he makes sure they're fed. He makes sure they have everything they need. How much more do you think God will care about you? So cast your worry on him. And David is saying, I will put my trust in you. It's an active choice. And here's, here's what I want you to recognize. That fixing our gaze on God and his promises doesn't always guarantee that we will be free from anxiety forever. But if we don't fix our gaze on God, we definitely won't. So I'm going to say that again. If, if, if you know, fixing our gaze on God... And his promises, that, that won't always free us from anxiety forever. Okay? But it's the first step. And if we don't fix our gaze on God, we definitely won't be free of anxiety. And so, so God, what I want you to recognize is God is even more powerful than our feelings. He's more powerful than anxiety. Because anxiety kind of has this power over us. It, it can interfere with our lives, as, we, as we've talked about. It can, it, can help, it can make us feel worried and afraid. And it can, can interfere with actually feeling like we can live with any, any sort of freedom. And it's pretty powerful, but God is more powerful. And if we put our trust in Him, that's the first step. 
in, in, in overcoming it. And it's the first step in learning to cope with it in a way that is God honoring. Maybe, maybe God doesn't always take it away because he wants us, some of us, maybe we just need more reminders that God is there with us and he's got us. You know, Paul prayed a lot for God to take away this thorn in his side, for God to, to heal him of whatever he needed healed, for God to take away the thing that was interfering with his daily life. But God didn't. And so sometimes God has a very, uh, a very distinct purpose in mind. Maybe God is just wanting your attention. Maybe he wants you to be constantly reminded of your dependence on him. Maybe he's got something more special planned for you that you don't know what it is. But God is even more powerful, and we need to trust him with it. And what I want you guys to recognize is that God, when you trust him, will give you the tools to deal with anxiety. He will give you the tools you need to handle anxiety. How many of you guys have ever reached into one of these and had to use tools before? You've got a toolbox. Maybe your dad has one. Maybe, maybe your parents have one just lying around the house that they get into when they need to fix something. But here, here's the thing that I know about tools. So all tools are great, but not all tools are useful in every situation. Uh, last year, I was tearing down a house, uh, tearing down a wall in my house, rather, and uh, this was really helpful. I walked up to my, to my wall that I wanted taken down so that when people walked into my house, they didn't just bump into this wall that was randomly in the middle of our doorway. And so I, I took this hammer, I consulted Google, I consulted YouTube, and I started bashing away at that wall and tearing it down and it was awesome it was a ton of fun now that tool was really helpful in dealing with that but if i had gone at that wall with like a screwdriver it wouldn't have been very effective it would have been humorous that that i can't seem to tear down this wall with a city but i could poke a lot of holes in it but i'm not going to do a whole lot of damage with a little screwdriver and likewise there's been times i've had issues with my kitchen sink or my or my toilet or my bathroom vanity, and I've had to get under there and I've had to loosen the pipes and, and take out stuff that was clogging it and tighten it back even harder so it didn't leak anymore. And this tool was really helpful with that, but if I had tried to use a hammer on it, I probably just would have caused a bigger leak and it would have flooded my bathroom floor with smelly water. So sometimes, you know, all tools are helpful, but not every tool is useful in every situation. And what I want you to know when it comes to anxiety, Sometimes God gives us every tool we need, but sometimes maybe we're just using the wrong tools to deal with it. Maybe, maybe we need one or two tools to deal with it from time to time. Maybe we're okay, we can manage without it. Maybe we just realign our focus, put our trust in God, and, and then we don't feel anxious for a while, and we need to keep coming back to that every, every so often. Maybe sometimes we need every tool in the box to deal with it. And that's okay, too. There's a lot of controversy on how we are supposed to deal with anxiety. And I know most of you, you have friends that they're on certain kinds of medication for their anxiety. And I'm here to tell you, like, sometimes that's great. Sometimes it's the wrong tool. So sometimes every situation is different. It is not a one-size-fits-all. And what I want you to know is that when you put your trust in God, He will give you every tool that you need to cope with it at just the amount that you need it. So we can trust God to give us the tools that we need. And, and so maybe some of you are sitting here and, and you're going, well, this is great uh, for my friend, but I'm not born with anxiety. I don't, I, I don't know how to help my friend. So here, here's what I'm gonna tell you. If you have a friend who deals with anxiety and you wanna know how to help your friend, well, the first thing you have to recognize is that you are one of those tools that God provides for your friend in dealing with anxiety. And I'm going to talk a little bit on, on just five things that you can do to be a good friend to somebody who's in, who, who deals with anxiety. One is be someone that they can go to and trust. you got to be trustworthy. You, you can't just be someone that they talk to you about something and then you go around and tell the whole school. You've you got to be trustworthy. you, you got to be someone who can be helpful in that situation. Secondly, you have to listen more than you talk. And this is really difficult. Even as adults, it's difficult. But especially in middle school, this is really difficult. You know when someone talks to you and you're automatically in like, they're telling you about a problem they have and you're automatically going to problem solving mode. Like you want to fix the issue for them and that's why they're telling you about it. But refrain from that. If you want to be a good friend to someone who's dealing with anxiety, they need someone who will listen to them without just trying to fix everything and throw out information and advice that may or may not be actually helpful. So, so if you want to be a good friend, 
You know, be trustworthy and be able to listen carefully. Um, don't try to interrupt them. Don't try to give them unsolicited advice. Just be able to listen. Um, three, uh, that, that leads me to my next one, is you don't have to fix their feelings. In fact, most of the time you can't fix their feelings. But, but you can be trustworthy and you can listen well. But it is not your responsibility to fix your friend's anxiety. So, so don't put all that pressure on yourself either. Four, celebrate their successes. Because most people with anxiety will hide it or, or let it build up, let it fester. They don't know what to do with it. And they think it's abnormal that they feel this way because they can't figure out why they feel this way. And so when they do actually share with you, celebrate that. Say, hey, thank you so much for telling me. Thank, thank you for trusting me with this. And, and, and affirm them for doing that because that's a big step. So, so thank them for that. Number five, encourage them to talk to an adult. Because believe it or not, adults have lived quite a bit longer and have some more experience in dealing with some of these things. And they can actually help you and give you some more tools to deal with this in a positive way. So encourage them. Don't just keep to themselves. Don't just talk about it as friends. But encourage them. Tell their parents about it. Talk, talk to their, your school counselor. You know, it's, counseling is great. You, there's this misconception that counseling is for those who are really messed up. And it's not. It, the counseling is helpful for everybody. Uh, I, I've been to counseling on more than one occasion. My wife has been to counseling. In fact, she went to counseling. Like usually, we think of like you know marriage counseling. Um, when, when people are going to get married, there's premarital counseling. We did that. We also did post postmarital counseling, and she went to like counseling for herself, like before we even started dating, and because she wanted to work on things for herself, and she wanted the help of, of someone who's trained in that to be able to point out some things in her life and be able to help her become healthier as a person and have a healthier headspace. And so uh, sometimes, sometimes it's okay. Just go talk to a counselor. And you guys, there are resources in this town for that. So don't be afraid to do that. Now, if you are somebody who yourself, you, you are dealing with anxiety. You, you have feelings of anxiety on a regular basis and you don't know what to do with those. I'm going to give you three pieces of advice. One, and this is going to sound a little bit silly, but identify your feelings. Is it fear? Identify that. Uh, is, is it worry? Are you worried in general? Are you worried about a specific thing? Think, think, of, think through those things. Because if you can identify some of those things that are negatively affecting you, naming it is the first step in helping it. And, and like I said with anxiety, you can't always point it to a certain situation and say, yeah, that's, that's causing anxiety for me. Sometimes you can, though. And, and so what I tell students when they come talk to me about when, when they experience anxiety, the first thing I, I ask them is, is, or maybe not the first thing, but somewhere in our conversation, I say, okay, think about this last week. When did you feel the most anxious over this last week or two? I have them tell me about what was going on or, or what just the situation was. And, and maybe it, it's tied to a certain situation. Maybe it's just a bit of everything. Maybe, maybe there's no reason, but I get them talking. The second thing I ask them is, okay, over the last week or two, tell me about a time that you were at least anxious. If you think about it and you're like, actually, I, I wasn't super anxious during this day and this time. And, and maybe just identifying that will help you recognize Maybe there are certain triggers. Maybe, maybe there's certain things that you can do that distract you that actually relieve some anxiety for you. Uh, maybe it's something you find rest in. Uh, but but that you got to identify your feelings. Okay? And that kind of leads me to the second one. Is you got to focus on trusting God. Because if we focus on all the things that are stressing us out, if we focus on all the things we're afraid of, if we focus on the things that we're worried about, the what-ifs, then, then that's not helpful. You gotta go to God first and be like David, put your trust in God. And three, you gotta seek out the tools that God gives us because he gives us a lot of them when it comes to dealing with this. He gives us trusted adults. He gives us counselors. He, he gives us a people. He gives us friends. He, he even gives us his word so that we can know the word of truth and know who to depend on. But he also uh, gives us the power of creativity. And sometimes we've come up with medications that help take the edge off of things. And sometimes that's okay. There is no one size fits all. And I know that there's some controversy on, on, on some of that stuff. Not everybody believes the same way, but I'm here to tell you that God, God has given us tools to deal with these. And some tools are not necessary for everything, but some tools are. And there's no shame in that. So I want you to care for yourself, talk to someone, and remember what's true. Dive into God's word. Remember the truth that he cares for you. 
And that you can cast your cares on him and you can put your trust in him. God gives you the tools to handle anxiety. So as you guys get ready to go to your small groups, I want you to think about this. What is one tool that I can use to handle my stress or anxiety or to support others who are experiencing those feelings? I want you to think about that. I'll pray for you guys and you'll be dismissed to your small groups. Hey, hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed so you're notified when we upload future videos. Have a great day.